Infinite Suffering and Bliss. Yo, what's going on? It's someone that's no one, and welcome back to today's report. Today's report was sent in by Jalen. When this happened, 2019, the drug he used, quote, marijuana baby. For the dose, he notes, I don't know, it was a quarter of a bowl. Basically, it wasn't a lot. The route administration, smoked, gender, male, weight, 154 pounds, age, 18, height, 510, prior experience, nitrous oxide and cannabis. For his set, he notes, beforehand, I have been smoking that street shit, plus my tolerance is basically sober. And the setting, in the woods with friends, around a fire. Okay, so today, we have quite the cannabis report, probably the most intense and vivid one we covered yet. Not only that, but this is definitely up there with one of the strongest trips we covered in general. I'm talking that this is more so on the level you'd expect to get from DMT or Salvia, so much so that I do question if his friends did set him up with some. I haven't heard back from Jalen since he sent this from over a year ago, but he did tell me that this was indeed cannabis, that it was medical grade, and that it was called crazy gas. Now I can't find anything on this strain or a blend if it exists, but hey, maybe it does exist at a dispo somewhere. J1 was relatively new to smoking at the time, but it does appear so were his friends. But then again, not a lot of information is given about them. So it could very well be that he was given a strong psychedelic for this experience. But this wouldn't be the first report of cannabis doing something like this either. Some people just seem to be more prone to the psychedelic qualities cannabis can offer. If he had no tolerance really, was newer to the game, may have been prone to having a psychedelic experience, and it was some really strong medical stuff, you can better see how someone may end up having this kind of experience. But you'll see for yourself how this goes down. It's a full-fledged tripping experience you'd expect off any strong psychedelic. I'm sure you'll enjoy this, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Crazy Gas by J1 O'Neill The woods were illuminated by the warmth of the fire and the voices of four friends, gathered to do something debatably criminal. Remember to suck in, don't inhale, his friend warned. Just don't inhale, you big stick. He flickered the lighter and held it slightly above the glass bowl. Mm-hmm, Dick Dick hummed. To be honest, he wasn't a pro and was a little anxious about getting it right. He began to suck in through the top very slowly, like he was pleasuring the air. The flame began to pull into the bowl, burning the exciting substance he'd only tried twice before. The smoke flooded into the chamber as a sheepish white fog emitting a grotesque order. He sucked it like it was candy, but sucked a little too much for his own good. His lungs were brought to their limits, and he let out a small burst of smoke from his nose that stretched in the air. His friend released the oddly shaped bowl, and he inhaled fully. Then, out the air went. A few coughs followed suit, and so did the feeling of impending doom. Yellowstone was about to erupt. He declined slightly and cupped his stomach and held on the feeling of an eventual vomit. You okay, bro? His friend asked, wondering about his weird posture. Mm-hmm, he assured, although he didn't feel so keen. Not even a minute later, he felt a wave of euphoria wash over his nakedness, and that spinning leg that makes your head bob up and down, something you couldn't experience because of the rules of lies. He turned to his other friend. Hey, are you okay, Dick Dick? His friend laughed, observing his condition. With all his strength, Dick Dick replied, Yes, he paused. Come, Sheriff. He stared at Come, Sheriff, as his world turned into a series of slates piled on top of each other, akin to a freeze frame, before unknowingly seeping into something even more obscure than darkness, or a void. Wow, Dick Dick thought. Humans are really ignorant, thinking their lives are real, when all it is, is this. An empty nothing everywhere, but at this single point. Kinda jealous. The silence ripped him to shreds, or at least, what it left him as. The silence dropped into his space, and all he could do was submit to it. There was no way away from it. And for an eternity, 
He laid by its side, beside what he thought was everything. This was the nature of the universe, a torturous silence that ate at the soul, if souls even existed at this point. Nothing real existed at this point, but all of everything that would exist forever into the future. This is really boring, he thought to himself. This is really the universe? We are everything, but this is nothing, he realized after what seemed like an infinite time. I want to see people again. I want to remember life the way it was before this. This can't be all it is. He began remembering what it was like to be a human, and how jolly those times made him feel. He remembered things he hadn't even experienced, almost as if it was someone else's life. But now he was left in the waiting room, and no one would ever come to check on him again. He was just a pinpoint that encompassed everything. That's all he knew. He stared at himself and began to realize that he wasn't alone, that all around him was everyone. They were a static field of reds, blues, slight greens, and yellows. So small, they appeared to be dark. They were a busy buzzing flow that collapsed into each other at a center. They even made a sound. Yes, the sound of the buzzing was a constant. So constant, you can say it was insistent. The sound was what everything was. It was so irritating, and it never swayed from itself. That was one of the greatest torments. Dick Dick felt himself toss and turn violently like a dancing flame. He can see himself and all the actions he made. Yet, he wouldn't have called that person him. That person was someone, and he was everything, but couldn't understand that. That person was covering their ears and rolling on their sides, and was staring at everyone and everything that flowed into each other, being tormented by the sound of it all. The thought of that person faded away, carried by the flow of everything. If that sound was played on earth, it would distort space and time. It was so damn loud. This was it now. Life was everyone buzzing around forever, carried by that swaggering sound. And he lived that way forever, or what felt like forever. There was really no way to tell time here. Everything felt like it lasted for an eternity. Suddenly, a flash of shapes appeared in the space. A numerous number of gold glowing shapes arranged themselves into rows of hexahedrons. They expressed themselves as something close to a satellite. Around them were rings, and they sported an odd set of wings. They were beautiful and unexpected, but as soon as they came, they faded off, and the busyness of the universe increased while becoming dimmer and brighter in some areas. Dick Dick became a red trail of light in the middle of it all. The light was made of circular objects that popped up and disappeared constantly, like a sparkling movie effect or something. He can move any way he wanted to, but at a price. Peace or suffering. The trail became a sort of a metaphor for an arbitrary mission. Whether that be his feeling, physicality, or outside forces that seemed to enter into the space at random. There was a goal, and everyone knew it. He was zapped out of that experience and returned to being a pinpoint of light. Yet, he wasn't that anymore. He was a literal running emoji man running endlessly on a point of existence. He seemed flabbergasted. The universe, the flame of the universe, is a running man, he exclaimed. Excitement poured through and out of him. He understood what he finally was. He understood. He was human. He completed his goal. He cheered. And with that revelation came a new kind of experience, one he could have never imagined before. He was that back into being a trail of light, but this time he waned from red to a bluish white, while simultaneously becoming an infinite number of running emoji men running into their mirrored selves, destroying themselves the instant they touched. They also ran in an intangible direction. It doesn't make sense with words. This was a real pain. To describe it better, it was more like if someone programmed two entities adjacent to each other to walk into each other, and once they connected, they disintegrate. Now imagine that everywhere, flowing into each other in infinite, tightly packed lines, so full you can't even think before vanishing. The emoji running man rotated with his thoughts in the direction of the system. He could feel anything it could. 
The pain started mildly and increasingly became worse and severely unbearable. And just as he thought it couldn't get any worse, it superseded that, and even that, overriding itself over and over. This pain can never be felt physically. If it were to, you wouldn't even have a body to hurt anymore. Thoughts erased so fast that it became an inconceivable process. Cries for help and sobs of death and suffering were plentiful. This had to stop. He needed to help himself or everyone, or whatever this was. He needed it to seize. Continuously, while this was happening, the universe turned a bright scarlet red, reflecting the suffering of the system. The nature of the universe was suffering, and time is eternal, everyone repeated. Time is eternal. They repeated over and over, and over and over, infinitely. What did infinite even mean to them at this point? Infinite wasn't grand enough to describe it anymore. They knew this would continue forever and ever, and the pain would only get worse and worse as we flow into each other. So, instead of fighting it, we should submit to it, because it will never get any better than this, and we should appreciate where we were only milliseconds before in time, because this is going to be forever. While at the same time, contradicting that pain with satisfaction. They thought about all the times they didn't feel pain, and how good that felt. Even the milliseconds before were seen as relief. They could see it, so clear and sharp. It was like their crack. They always needed more, just to escape the endless pain that was everything. This went on forever, constantly twisting into each other awfully, trying to please each other. It was the most useless effort ever. A new pain settled in. The trail spiraled into itself, twisting and turning, and bending at all ends. The pain reached its peak, and Dick Dick, for the first time in an eternity, opened his eyes briefly before he vomited on the ground, a little bit on himself too, though he didn't acknowledge this as reality or himself. This was merely a process, no different from anything before or to come after it. He was back to being a trail of light. This time, he was purple, and everything was calmer than he thought it ever could be. He could see the path he left behind, and all the mistakes he'd left. He began to hear voices, echoing endlessly. He'll be fine. Are you sure? Dick Dick! Ha ha, he's choking. They were voices of familiars. The trail turned to pale blue, and the feeling of being choked settled in with a crash. He fought the pain. Well, rather a feeling. The trail turned and pinched in on itself. The feeling increased sharply and split through him, choking him so tightly that he thought he died. All he could do was yield. There was no point in trying. Give him water, a voice asserted. Do you want water? Another voice asked. Yes, Dick Dick said. The water drained down his throat, then after a time, erupted right out from his stomach onto one of his favorite shirts. The voices were more talkative now, but he couldn't make out a single word they were saying. He could feel the calmness and the unrest in them. They echoed endlessly, like a storm of events, constantly being pushed out overwhelmingly. He gave up and let those feelings be for a while. It was a time of peace. That's what he told himself, at least. But shortly after vomiting, the choking feeling bulged against the top of his throat and shot into his head, not forgetting to pinch itself into a singularity. It woke him up and he threw up once again. It was the worst feeling, worse than anything. He began to think, and his thoughts echoed from the boundless abyss of the system. They were endless thoughts, but the same thoughts, layered over each other like building blocks. It was like thinking faster than thought would allow you to perceive. Talking and contradicting himself, agreeing with himself, lying to himself, and trying to please himself in order to make the pain cease. Everything was jumbled on top, and into each other like tangled earphones. Events here were a disorder of chaos. There were many moments when the voices lifted his spirits and made the pain seize, and it was so so very close, nearly touching yet infinitely apart. His hope was to end all of it, but then another contradiction would be thought of and he'd be back to square one. Everything was mashed into one another. Audio, 
The infinite destruction of the Emoji Men, the buzzing of the universe, and that spinning trail. All very excruciating. He's fine. He's fine? Clearly he's not fine. The voices bickered. Dick Dick called for help, but the voices could not hear him. Or at least, that's what he saw from his view. Every, he's fine, made the pain even worse. Dick Dick began to perceive his perception of life. He could see the categories certain things were made of, where and how his brain lumped things together. It was so recognizable that he didn't know what he was looking at. They were purely new to him. They were so distracting that the pain he was feeling was nulled in a way. He began to realize, this is just a story, a story of kids at a campfire, made up by the universe. Everything, every story, every person, everything he knew and didn't flashed before his eyes. The universe is just a collection of stories it created for itself, just out of pure urge exist. Everything there is so real, he marveled. He thought, wow, this is the best story ever. It always makes sense. Even though there was pain, he still felt far away from a goal. He was overjoyed to realize that everything really is now. The outside voices around him calmed drastically and he felt a poking at himself. Dick Dick, a voice called out. Dick Dick opened his eyes and saw his best friend Brad staring at him, looking a little concerned. Dick Dick was at the opposite side of where he first was when everything began. We had to drag you over here because you were acting autistic, Brett informed him. Dick Dick was amazed by that. He didn't feel any of it at all. All Dick Dick could say to him was, This was the best story ever. I have to finish it. You don't understand. He looked around, and his vision was still lagging, but not as intense. The buzzing feeling of the universe was going through his entire body. It carried a slight burning sensation. However, Thankfully, it had calmed down a hell of a lot. Dick Dick tried to finish the story, but he couldn't. Not the same way. He was himself now, and it just wasn't the same. He sat there describing, poorly I'll add, where he was to his friends, and how it all felt. He lay between his legs, enjoying the feeling of the remains of the substance as much as he could before he had to go home and pretend he wasn't just in a whole new universe. It was kind of tough. Two days later. Yeah, that was pretty cool, Dick Dick said. The end.